Okay, roll up crew. It's I mean, I can't roll up your bestest friend in the whole wide world. And welcome back to the Banner Saga. Welcome back to dying slowly in this horrible siege. Talk to Ivor. This is bad, says Ivan, as Ivor points across the battlefield. Aside from the fact that we're up to our necks in dredge, a stone singer shows up. How about that? Just like a stone singer. We've been losing warriors left and right. If we don't deal with it, this wall will come down by the end of the day. Dad, those are right at the docks. Alette runs up to you, out of breath. They're trying to smash up the boats. When you calm her down, she says the ravens are there, but she's worried that things can get out of hand. You consider what you want to do now, knowing that any of these tests will take a full day. Um, I'm sorry. If, they, if the warrior of the group says the walls will fall by the end of the day, then I've got to defend the walls. So let's do that. That stone singer is going to wreak havoc on us if we don't take care of it, Ivor tells you. This will be a rough fight, but we've got to take it down. You ready? You prepare yourself. This is me preparing. Prepped! I'm fully prepped and ready to battle, and we lost eight people. You know, I have no fighters. This is gonna be the worst. Alright. Let's do it. I wonder if I should let Ekil join us this time. Hmm. Just to see what he's all about. I'll bet he's got that same flippy flappy move that... that... one if has. Freaking jerk face. Um, yeah, screw it. I'm ready. Let's Let's do it. Let's battle! Yeah. Oh, there aren't so many. We got this. Well, that was a really terrible battle. No matter how hard you fight, more dredge keep coming. You begin to falter when the next group of fighters rushes in to take over for you, and you somehow make it back inside. Jeez. Oi, this is bad. Alright, Ivor, what, what you gotta say now? This morning, says Ivor, I saw him. Bellower's here. I think it won't be long now. Ivan leans silently on his staff nearby. One of your clansmen comes to you out of breath. Rook, he says. Things are real bad. Look, there's nothing you can do at this point, but a lot of the caravan have been robbed, killed, just disappeared. Those of us left are going to split up and hide where we can. Wanted you to know in case we somehow pull through this. He runs off clearly distressed. You grimace, wondering if this could have played out another way. Yeah, of course you're going to word it like that, because of course it could have played out another way. This whole game is based on the choices that you make, and I have been clearly making all the worst choices. I had a really good day the other day, and everything ha was awesome, and now everything is just crap. All crap, total crap, terrible, bad crap, forever and ever crap. <sighs> All of my clans, look at that. I am down. I am down to a hundred and thirty five. A hundred and thirty five people left in my group. That's it. <sighs> let's go. Let's go check out the riots. When you get down to the dock, it's pandemonium. Few work on the ship now as the ravens stand over bodies of people with the huge crowd roars in anger. Bulwark's axes are covered in blood. What happened, you shout, pushing your way through the rioters? What did you think would happen? responds Bulver coolly. Didn't take them long to figure out we weren't building ships right under their noses, and they can't have one. You gonna lend a hand or just stand around? 
I'm gonna... This has gone completely out of my control. There's nothing I could do. Ugh. I gotta leave the fighting up to the ravens. They can handle it. This is in your contract, isn't it? You shout to Bulwark. Not a good way to make friends, though. No, not a good way to make friends, though, he replies, sidestepping a rock thrown at his head. Despite his gruff nature, you almost get the sense that he doesn't care either way. Yeah, he probably doesn't. You leave torn on how you feel about the whole situation, but you've got enough to worry about as it is. Best leave them to their job. My god, this is just turning into the worst thing ever. A whole nother, another day, eh? Another day, another dead. Another terrible, awful. Yay, I, I've got three supplies. Ivor, you begin. Can we really keep this up? Ivor looks as if he hasn't slept for days. We lost a lot of fighters, he mumbles. The weight of the situation is crushing. You're telling me? Oh my god. Then, from far in the distance, you hear a horn. <gasps> Dredge don't use horns, it occurs to you. Ivan appears at your side just as a long caravan of people come into view. Dredge turning to attack them. Who is that, you ask? Who is that? If I... Okay, I have a theory as to who I think it might be. And if it is this person, I'm going to be... I'm, I'm going to be very torn. Because I'll be so happy to see them. And so upset to see them. Because I think I know who it is. And if you think... If, if you're joining me and then thinking you know who it is, then you know who I'm talking about. Let's see who it is. It can't be, says Ivan. He runs towards the gates, shouting, You see their banner? It's Hacken! As you wonder how they got here, the gates are heaved open and you charge into the field, clearing a path through Dredge. Oh. Well, I feel like I'm slowly getting better at the combat. It still doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I have no idea of strategy. I have no mind for it. I just can't. But I feel like I'm starting to figure it out. So, you know. You can't remember how it happened, but one minute you're getting destroyed outside the camps at Borsgard, and the next minute you found yourself in the company of Hacken and two menders. Well, that's good. Golly, it sure is nice that my main story people can't ever die. Juno? Yay! I wasn't sure if I'd ever see you again, Ivan. She smiles and they embrace. Ivan is completely taken aback, as though he doesn't dare believe she's real. I'm sorry, I couldn't make it to Sergerholm. I ran into problems. That seems very Gandalfy. You female Gandalf? Gandalfinia? Yeah, I'm just gonna. Problem is putting it lightly. Lightly. <laughs> There's a mile-wide canyon practically splitting the world in two over our hills. Couldn't find a place to cross. Worse, dredge are practically falling out of it like blood from a wound. They're not coming from the north anymore. They're everywhere. We noticed. Glad to see you made it out alive, Ingvar. I take it the others didn't? Hacken becomes quiet. Then he motions towards Juno. She got across somehow. Found her out cold for a second time since leaving Strand. <laughs> we need every axe we can get right now. Bellower is here. Gods be damned. I thought I was free of that menace. I'll deal with the Bellower. Come on. No need to tempt him by standing out here. Eee! I can't wait to see what she could do. I'll bet it's a lot of really awesome. Hacken's caravan enters the city, fighting off waves of dredge as they go. To your relief, hundreds of skilled warriors are now safely in Borsgard. Alrighty, we had barely anybody left. And now we've got a whole bunch. Oh my god. 64 days of supplies. Yes. Thank you, Hacken. 
Thank you so much. You have saved us. Oh my god. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. Hackett joins you on the wall with his personal bodyguard, Moger. Behind him, the Prince Luden stands alone, looking miserable. I was right! It is Luden. He's here. He's just not the one rescuing us. He's just kind of along for the ride. I have one last trip to make. I need this one to come with me, she says, pointing to you. I'm sorry, Ivan. You must wait for me one last time. Do not let the city fall before I return. It takes everything within Ivan's power to hold back, but he does. She turns to you. Rook, come with me. We'll return in two days, maybe less, if you're as quick as you look. Tell anyone you need to know. I, 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 me, personally, I'm in the mind of, yes, let's go immediately. But I guess that's because I know more about what's going on than Rook does. So I gotta try and put myself in Rook's head right now. <sighs> We'll be slaughtered out there. Juno pauses and something shifts in your vision for just a moment. I know it's hard, she says, her voice filling your head. And you've already been through a lot. As she speaks again, the rest of the world melts away. But you're needed. You can't find the words to argue. Now he's of the same mind as I am. Yes, ma'am. Let's do it. Let's go do whatever it is we need to do. And what are... What are... Are those... Are those dredge? What is that? You don't remember leaving the city, but here you are, walking through unfamiliar ground behind Juno. You're alone aside from hundreds of dredge who are all facing an enormous stone ahead. The hairs on your back of your neck stand up. Those are dredge. They look like a bunch of old-timey priests with their big old priest hats and their, their collars, I guess. This is weird. Oh, is that the... Is that the godstone of the dredge? Hey, they're all chill. They're just like, whatever, man. This is neat. I'm so curious. We're at the godstone of Stravs. Stravs. Uh, you glance nervously around, but the dredge don't seem to hear her. It's okay. You can speak. Softly. Is this where you're gonna sacrifice me? <laughs> Juno smiles. What could have come across as profoundly creepy looks sincere instead. Aw. No, the dredge cannot see us. To be more precise, they can see us, but I've convinced them to be unconcerned. That's cool. I can understand your apprehension, though. Yeah, I want to know who you are, Juno. I wish we'd have time for a proper introduction. My name is Juno. I am on the Mender Council. You've met Ivan, my apprentice. How are you doing these things? Controlling mines? I thought menders built things and healed wounds. You were right. Menders do these things. Some of us still practice the teachings given to the Loom Mother's first creations. We are called Valka. I believe I am the only one who could influence another's mind. Then why not take control of Bellower? I learned the talent to heal minds, not control them. Though even some Valka have trouble believing this. Taking control of Bellower... It is the difference between convincing a child to sit still and telling a starving bear to stop being hungry. Huh. Yeah. Good luck with that. The truth is, we're rarely a match for the Sunder anymore. Our advantage is that we can train more Velka. It's also our weakness. The Valka pass on and lose their knowledge while the Sunder simply grow older and more powerful. Bellower is both immortal and beyond my influence. To a point. Then how do we stop him? The God of Secrets will play a part, as will you. Ooh, I'm the chosen one. I'm important. I like being important. Look at me being important. I'm important. Okay. Take it, take it down a notch. What are we doing out here? Do you know the God Stravs? Few know the stone exists, even among those who have lived their whole lives in Boar's Garden. While Dungle deals in fortune, Stravs taught men the value of trade in a different way. He showed them that it has consequence, two sides of the same coin. See the silver in the stone? The gales up here wear away the stone, but the metal remains. What do you mean the... the... Oh, well. I, I, I'm dumb. 
Of course, there's metal in stone. It's where metal comes from. It doesn't mean they built the stone out of an, with a metal frame and then put stone around it. Uh, I, I'm a dummy dumb. Forget, forgive me. We need a piece of this silver. So you want me to march all the way up there and take a piece of silver from that godstone? All right, you know, I like your thoughts. They're pretty clever. The god Stravs is wreathed by imagery of silver weapons. The myths say he traded these weapons to the gods, and they used them to kill each other. Ooh. Those who seek out the stone call him the god of trade. The menders call him the god of secrets. He was both. Impressive. So why are we surrounded by dredge? They seem to be drawn to the godstone. There are many things we don't know about Stravs. Maybe they see him as a patron, or it is an attraction they cannot explain. Does Stravs have something to do with this serpent of Einertoft? What was that thing? I cannot say. Can't? Or won't? I have my suspicions, but until I've had time at the Mender's libraries, it would be unwise to speculate. Smart girl. For all our knowledge, it always seems as though we know little. Imagine how the rest of us feel. Ha! <laughs> ah, 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 yeah, it's so true. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. No. On the contrary, the less people know, the more certain they tend to be. Well, yeah, that is pretty true. Why did you pick little old me? Oh, Rook. The guy who used to have a, a very nice Spanish accent, but I gave that up for some reason because it was hard to do. Why didn't you take Ivan or Hakan? You don't even know me. I apologize for putting you in danger. Ivan must keep Borsgard from fa falling while we are away. Stupid nose. Stupid itchy nose. Ugh. And if something goes wrong here, I need to be certain one of us makes it back alive. I saw the thoughts of each person when I arrived at Borsgard. You were the only one I knew would return. Oh. What do you mean? You would find a way back to Alette no matter what. Let's get what we need and go. Indeed, you'll need to dislodge at least a fistful of the metal. We will forge it into an arrow to slay Bellower. Wait, after everything you've told me, make a magic arrow to shoot Bellower? That's all it takes? Why didn't you do that a long time ago? Juno gets a faraway look in her eyes. No, that's not all it takes. What I tell you now must not be repeated. Ooh. Secrets. I like secrets. Tell me your secrets, you know. The arrow will not kill Bellower, even were it to strike his heart. He has no physical weakness, but it will sow doubt in his mind. Oh. When it pierces him, I will be able to, I will help him to believe that he is dying. The rest of you will convince him of it with sword and ax. Everyone who fights at your side must believe it to be true. You're going to trick him into thinking he's dead. That's the most insane... He really can't be killed? No. Someday he will awaken and realize he's not dead. I imagine he will be quite upset. First, we must make the arrow. Focus on the task at hand. She looks knowingly at the godstone, waiting for you to start climbing. Rook, I am not certain how the dredge will react when you do this. And behind us is a sudden drop. So be careful. All right, I'll just waltz right up here to this this old godstone made out of silver and stuff. Well, you see, there's okay. That stuff has to have been put in there. Approaching the back of the stone, you start to climb, looking for a loose piece of silver vein. Even without looking out onto the dredge, you feel each sinister face watching you closely. Held back only by Juno's influence. Panic races through your blood. Okay. Um. No, no. I, I must be calm about this. I'm gonna rip out a chunk and it's gonna be... It's gonna be the bad idea. I gotta, gotta get a little higher. As you climb, you can't help but notice the stony masks of dredge lined up before the godstone like worshippers before an idol. Just a glimpse nearly immobilizes you. Your hand rests on a piece of silver that comes away easily. The dredge do not react. Good. Should I get another piece? 
While you're here, you glance quickly around to see if there's any more low-hanging fruit. You're able to pry away another smaller piece of silver ore before your nerves give out. You nimbly descend to where Juno is waiting. Well done, she says. As you walk back through the dredge, your, their heads turn in unison to follow. The dread that lingers and the shaking in your hands does not subside for hours. How very creepy. But I successfully got those pieces of silver for killing the bad guys. And that is awesome. Strav's whetstone. You approach the gates of Borsgard again, relieved that they're still standing. It looks like they took a beating while you were gone. Alette rushes to your side and throws her arms around you once you've crept through the gates. Awesome. Juno smiles at the reunion and tells you, take this time with your daughter. Find a smith who can fashion an arrow from that silver. I have other things of which you must attend, but meet me on the walls when you are done. Cool. Uh, well, you know what? We gotta call it today. I got me a sweet piece of silver from the godstone of... St oh, I can't read. I forgot his name. Straws. That's it. Straws! I, got, I, I gotta remember straws. Like, you know, a straw. And, and, anyway, whatever. So yeah, I'm out of time. So we're gonna continue this in the next video. But thank you guys so very much for watching. I am very pleased with the outcome so far. I made a few good decisions this time. And I can tell because nothing bad happened. That's always a good thing. So yeah. Let me know how you feel about the video in the comment section below. Or just click the like button. And as always, this has been Kit Rollup. I will see you guys later. Bye!